In this video I'll show you how to put multiple games on a USB stick for your C64 Mini. In my previous video I showed how that the current method is really only to put one game on a USB at a time, but a YouTuber by the name of Crazy AI left a comment on my last video describing how he was able to compile multiple games onto one file. So I'm going to show his method in this video and I want to say a huge thank you to him for leaving the comment and sharing this information. If it wasn't for him I would have had no idea how to do this. Also another YouTuber by the name of Ransom left a lot of um, comments to help me out and some information that Spanner Nick posted up on the forums which also helped me. Um, I think Spanner Nick's method is slightly different to this but it's all kind of the same thing. Before I start showing you this method, a little bit of housekeeping. In my last video I said that the save states were saved to the file. That's actually incorrect. It's saved to the um, C64 Mini itself. Which in some ways is good because it means that you can have four games saved on those save states. This is good because what it means is you don't even need your USB plugged in. You can store four games onto your C64 Mini within those save states. On my C64 at the minute, as you can see, there's no USB plugged in and I'm able to load up Dariath, Rick Dangerous, Stunt Car Racer and Up and Down. This is stored in the system's memory itself and ideally I think if we were somehow able to have more than four save states per game, in other words when you load up basic you can have like say 16 or 20 save states, you could basically save um, 16 games onto the system itself and I think that would be the way forward if we ever get that far. But with my current method, thanks to Crazy AI, I can store up to 5 games within one file on a USB. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your hands on DIR Master V3.1.1 and I'll leave a link in the description where to get this but um, essentially once you get to the website just download the file, um, install it and what you'll have is this little program right here. What we are doing with this program is actually extracting the PRG file out of the D64 file. And what sometimes happens is there's more than just the game on the D64 file. So if I use Stunt Car Racer as an example, just drag your D64 file into the program and we have a few different files within that D64 file. Now, we have actually a few PRG files as well. One of them has, as you can see here, the documents, one of them has the info, and through process of elimination, the last one must be the actual game, um, using deductive logic anyway. But you can see here that the size of the file is bigger than the rest of them too, so that's a bit of a giveaway. But if you find that you extract one of these and it's not right, just try and extract a different file. Um, so the way to actually extract, I'll do, um, let's do Aztec Challenge as an example. So I drag it in here. It, this is a slightly easier one um, because there only is one file really. And uh, I'm going to show you this one because I'm going to rename the file a little bit. So what you do is with the um, file selected, go to export and see it's saving as a PRG file. And I just have a separate folder called PRG. And you can see here it's like the names, like it's got this Aztec CHA, which is challenge, and it's got another couple of things just to make it easier to load up. I'm going to delete that. It doesn't matter what it's called, but I keep it as small as possible so that whenever you go to actually load these, there's less to type, and we'll get to that later. So all we do is hit save. Um, I'm going to replace that. That's fine. I've already done it. And close that up. Now, I've went ahead and redone like five of these anyway, so I've got um, five PRG files. Now what I need to do is turn that back into a, a D64 file. So we go back into DR, IR Master, go to New, D64, and here we have a template of a D64 file. So all we need to do now is just drag them into this file here. And you can see there the Rick Dangerous one's probably too long. I should rename that to just like Rick or something because I'll have to type that whole thing out when it comes to loading it. But essentially now all we need to do is go to save as and then we're going to use that same name, the D60 uh, the D64 dash drive, and I've just got that in a different folder. So if I just save over that, hit save, replace it. And in here I have my file that I've already made 
and that one file should have these five games in it and that is essentially how we're going to get five games in one file and put it on the USB. So drag this file into your USB and put up the C64 Mini. So now that we have our USB with the file plugged into the C64 Mini, go ahead and load up BASIC and uh, we're going to load the file just as we normally would but with a slight difference in the loading code. Um, I don't actually have a keyboard set up at the minute so um, I'm just going to use the virtual keyboard and here's the difference in the code so normally at this point we would put in the star when we're loading our game I'm going to put the dollar sign in here another quotation mark comma and eight this will allow us to load up and see the list so uh, now we press the enter button which is the leftmost button on the joystick it's searching for a dollar sign and it's uh, ready at this point we just type in list so that it lists everything that's on our file that we just created. Hit list and then again hit enter. And here we have the games that I've just put on that file. Now what we do is type in uh, load and then we're gonna load the game. Now you can see here why I just was talking earlier about keeping the file name down. Because as you can see, if I wanted to load Rick Dangerous Night right now, I'd have to type out that whole thing. Um, what I could do is replace that and just call it Rick and uh, as long as it's memorable enough that I'll know what it is. Um, uh, so we'll just load the, the quickest one here which is Aztec Challenge. But I've just called it Aztec so just go ahead and type in Aztec. Uh, where is it? Yep, Aztec and it's just whatever it displays as you type in uh, in quotation marks and then the usual comma here. And again, hit enter, searching for Aztec, and loading. So um, it's probably going to take a little second or two to load. If it takes too long, then I'll just edit this part out. As you can see in this file, I've only got 13 blocks free, so I wouldn't have actually had any more room to put any other games on this. Um, I don't know if there's a workaround for that yet, but at least we can get five games on a, on a USB as opposed to just one game. And when you couple that with the four save states, then technically I could play like nine games at the minute. Okay, so it's ready. Um, the loading is done. And now I just press, uh, just as you would in the previous video I showed you, just press run and hit enter. There we have loading. That's basically it. That's the, all the steps you need to know. Um, I'll just uh, show that it's working. I'll just hit all the buttons here, get it to load up. Aztec challenge, load up, no problem. And uh, I really should get a virtual key, a real keyboard though, because it is a little bit annoying having to switch between all time. But here it is working, um, Aztec challenge, and uh, all the other ones will work too. It's just a matter of loading them out. I know there will be better methods coming up soon, so keep an eye on my channel. I'll try and update a new video if new methods become available. The creators of the C64 Mini have also said that they're going to make. Um, updates to the firmware and loading games will be easier in future. Ideally, if games could be stored on the C64 Mini itself, the way um, the save states are stored on it, I think that would be the best way of going here. A bit like what you see with the SNES Mini at the minute, there's people can load lots of games onto it. But when, that, when those methods do come out, they'll require um, firmware updates and possible modifications to the hardware so I think this video will still be relevant for years to come uh, especially for those users who have just got this um, out of the box and haven't done anything to it. Thanks for watching I hope this video helped you load up some more games and please consider subscribing so you don't miss the next video.